Well, all right. Hello, everybody. It is, oops, uh, yeah, it's me, Gordon Firemark. I'm the podcast lawyer. And uh, it's Saturday. I'm a little later than I expected to be because we had some stuff going on here at the house and the dog got out and I had to chase her around. I, I got in my monthly morning walk <laughs> ahead of schedule. And, um, uh, and uh, then I had to go to the grocery store. I, you know, we've just, it's been a, a crazy morning because uh, the house is all torn up. We, we've had water damage and we're having to replace cabinets and floors and do all kinds of remediation. And uh, what a disaster. We're, and we're not even down in Texas where pipes are bursting. These. This is just here in uh, relatively dry California. But uh, it is what it is. In any event, uh, I am, uh, I'm here today just, uh, first of all, if you're here and you're watching, I would love it if you would. Drop a note in the comments. I see Rob says, looking forward to the show. Hi, Rob. I'm glad to, uh, glad you're looking forward to it. I'm happy to be here doing it with you. And uh, I wanted to, um, what I wanted to do is uh, talk a little bit about uh, something I've been doing in my Legit Podcast Pro group this last, um, this whole last week. I've been talking really about what it takes to be treated, to, to, to treat your thing professionally, to be professional in your approach. And I'm not talking necessarily about being a professional in the sense of making it your living, making it your career with podcasting. What I'm really talking about is um, being professional in the way you podcast and setting yourself up for success and setting yourself up for um, uh, earnings opportunity, revenue, profitability, the opportunity to make money and hopefully the actuality of making money um, from your podcasting ventures, if it's what you want to do. Maybe it's a side hustle for you. Maybe it's just a, you know, a self-funding hobby. Hi, Sarah. Nice to hear. Nice to see you here. Welcome. Thank you for, for your interest. Yeah, you're interested in hearing about what I'm going to talk about. Great. So in any event, inside my, my group, Legit Podcast Pro, here on Facebook, uh, you can actually join, I've got a mailing list as well, so you can join the mailing list by going to legitpodcastpro.com or, um, and you can join the Legit Podcast Pro Facebook group here on Facebook. Um, I think it's Facebook slash, facebook.com slash groups slash Legit Podcast Pro. Um, but uh, I've done this training all week. I, I did, uh, I've gone live every day, except yesterday, uh, but since last Friday, when I did this first pr this presentation, I'm going to give you a really quick presentation today uh, that I'm uh, just going to going to share with you now, if you don't mind. Let me um, make sure I'm set up right here. What do I have here? Yeah, we're going to go to the slides. Here we go. And I'll just go through this. I'm going to go much faster than I normally would with this because I've already done it. But I just want to say, so this is three keys to being a, a legit podcast pro. And I've already sort of talked about what that means to be a pro. Um, and um, waiting for something to connect up here on my screen. Good. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so I'm just going to give a sort of an overview of the principles. And then each day in the last week, I've sort of drilled down into those principles. And I've actually set up a, a one-stop page, uh, web page where you can go and see all these videos and binge them if that's what you want to do. Uh, you know, it's all good. So uh, let's just jump in. So my goal is really to take you from the aspiring uh, podcaster, the dabbler, the amateur, the hobbyist podcaster to full-on professional. And as I said, it's about it's about treating it professionally and being professional in your approach, whether you look to make money from this or not. Making money from it, of course, is nice. So this is for you, whether you plan to take your podcasting, your business, your uh, make it your your business, your profession, or a side hustle or whatever, but you want to increase your reach and your influence and uh, impact by taking it seriously and having that professional approach I'm talking about. And it's for you, whether you're a host or a producer or a, a, an editor or um, some other part of the podcasting ecosystem, maybe you run a network or whatever. And um, these principles will help you make the most of your efforts. And so here are my, um, whoops, I don't know what I did there. Come back to here in a minute, I hope. I apologize. I'm having all kinds of tech issues today. All right, here we go. So, um, yeah, three keys. So, there we go. All right, let me see if I can get this functioning. Okay, so three keys to being a legit podcast pro. Step one, you have to think legit. You have to think of yourself. Get in the mindset of 
professionalism. You have to, you know, everything here starts here in your head. And, um, uh, oh, Sarah, you're in the autism field. Rob, Rob is calling that out. Uh, I'm going to, um, I'm going to, let me talk about that at the end here after I do this little presentation, because I have connections to the autism community as well. And I'd love to share notes and we can, we can chit chat about that at the end, but, but let me, um, run through this. So anyway, you got to get it in your head that you're professional. You have to have that mindset, take yourself seriously as a professional and as a business person. If you don't take yourself seriously that way, nobody else will. So you have to create that professional persona and visualize yourself in that role. And so you have to think legit. You've got to think like a professional that you intend to be. Being a legit podcast pro starts with thinking like one. And once you can do that, then you have to plan legit. And uh, uh, so last last Saturday, I did a, a talk about, uh, it was actually an exercise to get you thinking legit. And then on Sunday, I went through um, the uh, elements of a, of a successful business plan. And uh, I did an exercise and, and some materials about that. Um, once you're planning legit, look, let's face it, professionals don't just dive in without a plan. Knowing where you're going is, is half the battle. And it isn't so much about following the plan rigidly, but the act of planning, the, the, the work you do as you plan prepares you for a lot of the things that might come up. So it's about having those strategies in place. And, uh, finally, a professional has to behave, has to act legit like a professional. And that means having structures and strategy in place to do the things that professionals do to implement those plans and so on. And so in order to have those structures in place, the first of those is having a legit business structure. And I talk on Monday of this week about LLCs and corporations and partnerships and sole proprietorships and what's right for you and, and um, uh, suggested uh, different approaches to structuring your business for your own safety and security. Make sure you continue to own what you think you're going to own and, um, and uh, insulate your personal and other assets, your business, your other business assets and things from trouble that can arise from your podcast. You also have to have a legit team structure when you're bringing on members of your team, whether they're employees or independent contractors or freelancers or hobbyist volunteers, whatever they are, you got to know and understand the structure. So we did some some uh, org chart thinking, and uh, I talked a little bit about some of the legal ramifications and consequences about that, and um, presented some approaches to making sure you get it right so that there are no misunderstandings or uh, or uh, unmerited, unwarranted claims of ownership or entitlement to compensation and those kinds of things. Uh, you need to have a legit strategy for dealing with your intellectual property and with the intellectual property belonging to others and so on. On um, uh, Wednesday of this week, I, uh, I covered the intellectual property stuff. I gave an overview of what intellectual property is and how the protection works and where the rights start and end and all those kinds of goodies and uh, proposed some ideas about a structure. And then uh, just on Thursday, I talked about your legit client and customer strategy. And, uh, and that was the focus of things. And, you know, without you, you can't make money if you don't have clients and customers. And I also talked about the nature of the need for the right kinds of contracts, depending on the kind of monetization structure that you're using, different kinds of uh, approaches to monetization have different issues that come up. So that was really what I did. And, uh, there we are. So I'm going to come back to the camera now, if I can make it work. There it is. Hello. And uh, uh, let, let's just talk. Any, so it, uh, first off, I just want to say, do you have any questions about any of this stuff related to podcasts and podcasting? I'm going to turn off that uh, scroll across the top. That's just bugging me. Here we go. Um, so let's talk about this. So Sarah, you work in the, in the autism field or you have something connected to the autism field. My connection to autism is that my sister, uh, Rachel Firemark Cup is her married name. Rachel is a, uh, a psychologist and autism professional uh, and expert. She um, spent her master's degree time working on um, uh, studies related to something called auditory training for autism. Uh, they discovered apparently that some certain kinds of uh, I don't know whether it's organized or disorganized noise, white noise, essentially, uh, can, uh, when, when, uh, profoundly autistic kids listen to, uh, this kind of stuff, it, it helps, I guess, realign and, and allows them to focus. And it has a, um, 
a follow on effect so they can listen to it and apparently accumulates it. Anyway, so she wrote her master's thesis about this and uh, that's that. I don't know if you're familiar with that, Sarah, but um, auditory training, that, that is about 30 years ago now. So um, I, I'm sure the science has advanced since then uh, and I haven't talked to her specifically about that kind of thing. Um, Sarah, you say you're the only member of your family without autism, husband, two daughters and son with autism. And you say, that's amazing for my sister. Yeah. I mean, you know, she's, she's here to help people. She, that's really, she cares. And, uh, uh, interesting. My father was a neurologist and my mother is an audiologist and she worked in, uh, some interesting areas related to auditory process processing disorder. So I'm the black sheep of the family because I'm the one who went to law school instead of medical or, or uh, psychology school. So yeah, you're an international speaker on autism. Great. And I, do you have, do you podcast about autism as well. Um, I'm interested to know what your podcast is about and, and go ahead, plug the title here while we're at it, right? Let's do it. Um, and Rob, tell me what you've got going on. What's your, uh, what's your podcasting adventure all about? Your podcast? Yes. You say, yes, I'd love to, well, like I said, feel free to plug your podcast uh, in the comments, and that'll show up for people. So that's if people want to hear more, and I'm sure Rob wants to know more. <sighs> anyway, oh, Rob's got a, had a successful career and um, master's in computer science. Fascinating. That's cool. What's your podcast about? Let's hear it. Tell me what's cooking. What's cooking? Nice to meet you, Rob. Um, anyway, so, you know, I've been talking about this podcast business stuff and, um, uh, all week and, uh, I've actually, you know, I, I got to thinking, Hey, what if getting all this legal stuff was easy? What, you know, people have hangups about bringing in lawyers and that, <laughs> well, that's why you need a lawyer. Um, or do you? That's my point. So I have created something, and it's open, I'm opening up the doors on Monday to something called Easy Legal for Podcasters. There it is. And um, what I want to do is invite everybody to come over to the All Access page and watch the videos that I've created. Oh, Sarah says she was a paralegal for 10 years and always loved lawyers. <laughs> you always love to love a lawyer. Okay. I'm not going to touch that one. My wife would be mad. <laughs> um, no, I'm... Um, uh, well, that's nice. There aren't that many people who say they love lawyers, so that's nice to hear. Anyway, I'm going to type uh, a link here. It's access.legitpodcastpro.com. Uh, so, to the week's training. So, what I've done is I've created this all-access page. Uh for the training and, um, oops, I posted the wrong one. There we go. Uh, all access to the week's training in access.legitpodcastpro.com. It's a page with just all the videos on it. And, uh, then, uh, I'm, I'm going to go on there in the next couple of days. I'm going to tell you a little more about easy legal for podcasters. What happened is I got to thinking, look, not everybody wants to hire a lawyer. Not everybody can afford to hire a lawyer. Not everybody is inclined to hire a lawyer to help them with their legal stuff. So, um, so I, I decided, well, what if I could make it easy to do it yourself? And, um, and I, uh, I created this, it's a course and there's templates and I give how to walkthroughs. In fact, this afternoon I'll be recording the last few of those how to walkthroughs on how to register your trademark to protect the title of your show, how to form your LLC and, and get yourself up and running and protect it, how to make contracts with your co-hosts and your guests and how to make contracts with your vendors and your sponsors and all that kind of stuff and how to protect your intellectual property. All of that is covered inside the easy legal for podcasters course. And I'm striving to make it affordable for anybody who's serious about podcasting and being a professional in their approach to things. So that's, I'm not going to give any more pitch than that. I just want to invite you to, um, to uh, check into uh, uh, the access page at access.legitpodcastpro.com. 
put that up on the screen one more time. There it is access.legitpodcastpro.com. And of course, that link is in the uh, in the comments below the video here too. So uh, check that out. Sarah says, my husband's not a lawyer. He's okay with that. Yeah, right. And let's see. So Rob, my biggest problem is workplace adv- activists who fill the blanks of autism with all sorts of fictions. For instance, a feminist might look at me and see all sorts of threats, but I'm projecting nothing. Um, interesting, interesting challenge. Well, so what is the answer to those kinds of struggles or threats? I, and I don't mean to put struggles in quotes. It's a valid, re- legit struggle. But what's the answer? Educate people. Make good, valuable information available for so more people are more familiar with the issue. And how do you do that? How do you get it across to someone like that, a feminist who's threatened or sees a threat, from an autistic person? Well, one is by being the best person you can be and and showing them that you're not a threat, but also um, by giving them a reason to listen and find out what you have to say and uh, sharing your information. So Rob says, for my part, I appreciate the free info, but I'm going to be a paying customer due to the risks associated with your advocacy. For example, I work for, oh, okay. Well, Rob, you know what? I'm delighted. That's true. You know, the easy legal for podcasters really is for the folks who are inclined to do it yourself. Some people prefer that approach, and some people want the done for you. And uh, I am, that's, you know, that's how I make my living as of doing the done for you stuff. I just wanted to make this stuff more accessible so more folks could take this more professional approach without having to incur uh, what they are scared of as big legal fees. Um, you may be surprised to find out how, how uh, modest they really are when you're doing things ahead of time, you save a lot of money. Where lawyers get expensive is when they're fixing your mistakes or uh, dealing with emergencies as they, that come up as a result of your your actions or inactions and things like that. That's when lawyers become expensive. But um, you know, look, we charge a lot per hour, but you get a lot out of that hour from from time with a lawyer. And uh, oftentimes, you don't need an hour. You need ten minutes here, ten minutes there, right? So. Rob, I'd be happy to, to connect with you. In fact, if you'd like to schedule a consult sometime, uh, reach out to me, DM me on Facebook or whatever, and I'll, I'll give you the link to set up a free consultation phone call or, or video call with me, and we can go from there. Um, Sarah, well, let's see. So uh, awareness, you say. Awareness. Let's see. Um, yeah, raising awareness about autism. I mean, you know, that's really one of the powers, the the most powerful aspects of podcasting is we have the ability and the power to share information. I mean, you know, that is a breakthrough. I think that the podcasting technology, the ability to do an audio podcast or live video like this, these are some of the greatest technological advances in the history of mankind. Since the invention of the Gutenberg Press, when suddenly information was able to be disseminated more broadly. No longer did people have to rely on a handful of highly educated people standing up in front of people in, throughout most of history, it was in the Sunday morning service in Europe or, or the imam or someone would get up and share information with their masses, with their congregations. Now we are all in position to be the purveyor of that information. And, you know, as Spider-Man says, with great power comes great responsibility, of course. So it's on us to do a good job of this and raise that awareness and be vocal about issues that are important and attract an audience, not just that agrees with us, but attract people and persuade them. That's the power and the the promise of podcasting. And when you come at it, at it professionally, when you come at it seriously, People will take you seriously, and that means that your message lands. So this all goes full circle. The more you can do to take in a professional approach, the more you can do to change the world. That sounds very highfalutin, but I really do believe this is possible. You can change the world with a podcast. Even if you only change one person's mind about a, an important issue, I submit that you've changed the world. It has a cascading effect. You may not see it in your lifetime, but by persuading or influencing one person and they then go and influence someone else or or do an activity or don't do something that they were set to do, that counts. That's influence. And that's world-changing. 
we don't have to try to change the world overnight. We have to try to change the world for the better, however long it takes. Right? Right? Oh. Uh, that's a, you know what? How about a t-shirt? Hello, my name is World Changer. Or hello, I am a World Changer. Oh, that'd be great. You know what? How about the World Changer Summit? Maybe someone should do that. So Sarah says, yes, that's why I am doing it. Make your voice louder. Amplify. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Raising awareness. That is one of the great promises. I mean, look, you know, it's to entertain, of course, and it's to educate, of course, and but raising awareness. And so the trick, I think, this is an interesting conversation we're having. I think one of the tricks in podcasting is going beyond your own echo chamber. You got to get messaging out to people who, you know, they, they might be inclined to listen, but they might not have ever found you. So being discovered, being found means getting outside your comfort zone, playing a bigger game, right? Getting outside your box. Hello, Mohammed. Nice to see you. Salam from Oman. It's been a very long time and it's, <laughs> it's 2311 there, 11 minutes after 11 p.m. local time in Oman. Wow. This shows a kind of dedication. Uh, I'll understand if it's time to go to bed and you don't stick around for the whole however long. I'm not going to be here that much longer, I don't think. But we're talking, uh, Mohammed, about the, the power and the promise and the influence that podcasting offers and how, um, as I said, you know, well, anyway, I said it's, it's one of the greatest technological developments in the history of mankind since the Gutenberg Bible, in the Gutenberg Press, I should say, making information more available to the masses. And now we have the ability to stand on what is essentially a pulpit or a great a world stage, simply sitting in our own home, broadcasting, narrow casting, however you want to call it. But the trick is attracting an audience so that you can influence them. And, uh, you know, I don't know what the real answer, I mean, for everybody, it's going to be different, but we've got to do it. Um, and, uh, finding that audience. Yeah. Well, chatting about, okay. So Rob says, let's talk about a targeted audience contrasted with, um, wait, you said contrasted with a target audience with a broad audience. Yeah. Well, okay. I think I know where you're going with this, Rob, but if you want to clarify, please do. Um, let me just see. For, Rob, let me read your previous comment also real quick. You said, oh, let me get that back up. For me, podcasts will be targeted toward lawyers. They can understand litigation opportunities and representing autistic clients. In my case, due to the demographics of my, oops, um, my birth, I've lost before I get to chat with an HR department or student services. It's a harsh environment for white males and even harsh for, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to, I don't want to get into the white male thing because uh, there is, a, you know, everybody has their own crosses to bear. And um, um, I know, I'm not going to say it's easier or harder because of the color of, I, I think it is harder for some people's color of their skin. But um, um, and anyway, we'll get into that, Rob. I'm, I'm happy to have that private conversation, but uh, I don't want to go too public about that. that, that that's a hot button issue right now. Um, so contrast between the targeted audience and the general audience. Yeah, I think... Uh, this is my personal opinion is, you know, unless you are already famous, unless you already have the platform, unless you are uh, a stand-up comic who became a television personality who has an audience of people and a Twitter following of millions of people who, you know, who tune in to hear what you have to say, it's very hard to attract a general audience for a podcast. And I don't know that we should really try. Uh, it's one thing, I mean, you know, some shows go viral. You you create something because uh, you created a big audience because you're doing great work. Absolutely. But I think that if you aim for the audience of people whom you want to influence, and let's face it, most of us are not ever going to be in a position to influence the entire world or even that mass general audience. So pick a group, pick a demographic group, pick a, a segment. And decide, okay, I want to influence these people. What I would suggest is that you think a little bit outside the box and you play the bigger game by going a little beyond what's comfortable with that segmenting. But segment them, segment and serve them brilliantly well. Now, some of that is going to be based on subject matter. And doing a general interest podcast, again, you're you're it's like setting up a, a, a soapbox in the middle of a giant public square where 
people are going about their business. And yes, some of them will hear and some will stop and pay attention for a little bit. And they may even say, you know, I'll come back tomorrow. I want to hear more of what you have to say. But most people are just going to go about their business and they're never going to, never going to take notice. But if you're talking about something very specific and you set up right in front of the section of town where those people congregate, that is how you can influence that group. So attracting your audience sort of depends on what, you, what your subject matter is. Um, having a niche focus of your show is a great way to influence people who are also interested in that niche. My own case is the perfect example. I began podcasting in 2009, uh, a little before that as a guest on shows, but I started my own show, Entertainment Law Update, back in 2009. And um, I have attracted, I'm estimating, uh, based on the my my understanding of the total number of people in the world who actually practice entertainment law and study entertainment law, it's it's in a few thousand. There aren't that many people in the world. It's a very narrow niche topic, and so I um, I have an audience of about two thousand downloads a month. Now that's not a huge audience in the scheme of of uh, you know the Mark Marins and the and the um, Joe Rogans of the world. But people who are interested in my subject matter are tuning in and paying attention to what I have to say. That's influence. It's mine to use or lose. It's mine to use wisely or not. And, uh, and that's the kind of thing we have to think about. Rob says, yeah, hot button issues need to be handled in court rather than under other forms. That's exactly why I've decided litigation advocacy is the only reason. Okay, great. Well, I look forward to talking to you about it, Rob. It's going to be um, it's, I'm sure it's going to be an interesting conversation. I'm excited about it. So anytime you like, reach out and, and we'll set that up. Um, so back to, you know, influence and, and anyway. So I think choosing a targeted audience. I mean, look, if you want to reach an audience you don't already have a voice with, you can do it. You can piggyback on the influence of others. You can guest on people's show. Sarah, if you want to reach out to more people like yourself who have um, – uh, autistic family members, or if you want to do advocacy for autism beyond the community of people who are already talking about autism, then go on shows that deal with adjacent issues. Get Be guesting on those other shows and maybe bring guests on to your show from those adjacent issues. I don't know what those are, but it might be, as I mentioned, for example, my mom's uh, field of, of um, auditory processing disorders and they're, I think they're misdiagnosed as autism sometimes and vice versa. Um, so you might open up a discussion and broaden it that way and attract some of those audiologists and those people in that space. Or maybe it's educators uh, who are already a little bit aware and talking about autism. Or maybe you want to do something even broader where you want to reach, you know, I don't know, the community of people who, who may encounter and interact with autism, pe autistic people and not even know. Um, and find ways to to engage them with conversation. You've been on a, okay. So she says, um, get that on the screen. Yeah, absolutely, I've been on about twenty international podcasts. I have eight interviews on my show. Oh, great, new show. Okay, good, Sarah. That's fantastic. So, the, but the point is, if you want to expand your influence, if you want to expand your reach, you have to go as I'm saying beyond the folks who are already talking about your subject matter. And so, the the real trick is how do you pitch? the more general audience or the, or the, the people who have a broader audience that you want to reach. Um, maybe you should do reach out to people who do shows about banking for all I, you know, you have to decide what's relevant, but you know, maybe you want to, you want to get people who talk about banking or finance or uh, estate planning. And, and um, I can see how estate planning might be a thing where people who have autistic children need to think about what do you do to provide for the kid after you're gone if they're profoundly autistic, they may not be able to function without you. You got to set up your estate in the right way. Maybe there's the insurance angle, you know, and and so talking to people in the autism in the insurance community again, not not persuading them to do things a certain way, but raising their awareness that there's this community out there, and that there's an opportunity to, to engage with this audience. So there's lots and lots of things. Anyway, I'm 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 not ranting, but I'm preaching about influence. I, I believe that this medium we have, when we take it seriously and, and approach it with a professional attitude and have a plan and take ourselves and our, do things right, I think it has tremendous, tremendous power and potential. 
and I'm excited about it, as you can tell. Um, let's see. Well, Sarah says, I think I, I'm, I'm going to put this on screen. This is me bragging. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, you think it's value. I, I, I think so too. And I'm, I'm really glad to be appreciated that way. Um, Rob, sometime maybe do a show on the technologies I'm using, hardware, software, DAW, video controller, et cetera. Um, I, I'm, I'm happy to. Uh, that's a great idea. You know, I'll do that. I'll do that. Not, uh, you know, come into Legit Podcast Pro. If you're not already in that group, I'm doing this broadcast today on my podcast lawyer page because I wanted to, again, expand my audience, not just people in my group. And um, so I don't know if you're, Rob, in my group or not, but join up the group. Come on over and, and I'll... I'll I'll click your your authorization ASAP and get you in there because um, I do sometimes talk about that. And actually, as I mentioned it, well, I, I started to mention it. Uh, this space that I'm in, this is my home office. Um, it's also my studio, and uh, we had uh, a uh, a water leak, uh, a hot water pipe burst in the ceiling right up above there about well, the, in mid January, and. Uh, we're just now finishing up the the remodel. They had to rip out the walls and do the water removal and mold remediation. And there turned, fortunately, there wasn't any mold, but they had to do that repair. And it took several weeks. And we finally wrapped it up a few days ago. And dang it, <laughs> exactly, Sarah. Uh, we finally got all that done uh, just last week. And. Uh, anyway, so I, I'm waiting for the paint to cure. They say you should wait a few weeks for the paint to really fully cure before you apply sticky things to the walls. I have some acoustic panels. Uh, you can see some of them on the doors back there, which didn't get painted. Uh, those are felt acoustic panels that absorb sound. I have some more that are going on the wall over here, and I have a, a logo design that's going to go on the on the wall over here. And this desk actually moves. It rotates around. And all of my gear is attached to the desk so I can get different looks. Anyway, I'm going to give a complete sort of studio tour of all that once that's, everything is done. And I will talk about all the stuff. And I'll probably post links and affiliate links. And who knows, maybe make a few bucks from people following my lead. But, um, uh, but yeah, that's a great idea. Thank you for the suggestion. Um, Sarah's husband is a remodeler. Yes, I need him. You know, I needed him a few weeks ago. Uh, what's interesting is that we wrapped up this project last Monday, finished the painting and so on. On Wednesday this week, the foreman of the crew came out, basically from the, the restoration company, came out uh, to, you know, to go through and make sure I was signing off on everything. And he's so I'd write a check. And um, he was here on Wednesday and we were looking at things and, and, we, and my wife, mentioned and we made a new claim <laughs> we had a leak under our sink in the kitchen turns out it was leaking for months and it's moldy and nasty under there and so now the kitchen they ripped out all the cabinets on the ground on the floor level in that side of the kitchen and it's all of course we have hardwood and and so the cabinets and the floors and the hardwood goes through the whole house so this has turned into a ginormous project just overnight and uh and where we go. Pod, oh, the, the group. Let me, um, Rob is asking, what's the name of the podcast? It's called Legit Podcast Pro. Let me just link it to you right now. Whoops. Uh, I think that will work, that link. Uh, Legit Podcast Pro. If you search for groups on Facebook under Legit Podcast Pro, that will get you there. But you can also go to legitpodcastpro.com and join. I have a mailing list as well, and that will uh, will get you there. So there's the Legit Podcast Pro, and uh, that's the, the group on Facebook, and there's the mailing list part. You can sign up in one and the other in any way. And uh, yeah, because that group, that's the kind of stuff we're talking about here. I'm not doing, I generally am not talking about podcast tech. There's plenty of um, of groups and sites and and reddit channels and all those kinds of things that are talking about what kind of microphone should you use and how do you go about recording and what technology to use to record guests and all those kinds of things uh but you know people do ask me occasionally so i'll share my stuff and maybe invite we'll start a thread and invite other people to share theirs um but this is not it's not intended to be a tech help kind of a group so um 
There you go. Thank you. Thank you for asking for that, though, Rob. I appreciate it. Sarah, uh, how should we connect with products to sell on the show? Oh, so monetization. So you're talking about having, well, let me ask you, are you talking about um, sponsorships or are you talking about selling uh, using affiliate links? Um, because, well, I'll, I'll cover them both. If you are talking about selling products um, using affiliate links, that is, you sell somebody else's product and they pay you a commission. Um, thanks, Rob. You, you request in the group and I'll, I'll get you in there, no problem. Uh, so you, with affiliate sales, you get, oh, okay, thanks. Um, so three different things. Sarah's talking about merchandise like sensory products. Well, one is if you want to create a product, uh, that's a whole product development thing. You've got to man, you got to you know find a manufacturer, uh, create a prototype, get you know software coding and those kinds of things done. If you're going to make it yourself, but if you if you know that there's a product in the marketplace that you think would be a good fit for your audience and you would like to promote it, you can either get them as a sponsor, where they just pay you for advertising. Um, based on the size of your audience and the frequency of the messaging and and the repetition and length of the campaign and all that, you you know you set a price and and um, you know the going rate seems to be in the twenty five dollars per thousand viewers or listeners uh, range for a thirty second spot um, in the mid roll uh, of your show. Uh, that's the general idea. More niche topic, more focused, you might be able to get a little more if it's broader. You, you never know. In any event. 25 CPM is what they call that. That's uh, a general no neighborhood. Uh, if you're talking about actually wanting to, you know, demonstrate the product on the on the show and and maybe have them on as a guest to talk about the thing and maybe you know promote it and endorse it and and offer it for sale. The, the other approach is the commission sale, the affiliate commission. That is, you've you've seen it where where someone will be talking about the product and they'll say, and if you click the link in our show notes, we're going to get a little money from it. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but we thank you for supporting us this way. That's a great approach. Um, two approaches. To that is one, you can go through certain, uh, like if you if you if it's sold on Amazon, you can get a commission just by signing up for an Amazon. Uh, they call it Amazon Associates. Uh, you can sign up for that. It's a very small commission with Amazon, but what's nice about it is that if you link a product and somebody follows your link and then they buy six other things, you actually get commission on all the sales that are made there. So you might be getting 2 or 3% of the gross amount that they purchase within, I think it's the first five days after the after they click the link, something like that. Um, so that's an interesting approach. But you can also go direct to manufacturer. If you're, if you're dealing with someone who sells their product direct to consumer, you can ask them, hey, if I, you know, can we set up an affiliate link? Either an affiliate link or a promo code where you promote it on your show. You say, when you buy, use this code, this coupon code, and you'll save 10% or whatever. That way, they enter the code and, and the, the seller knows, oh, that sale came through your offer, your promotion. And then you can strike a deal with the seller to, to share the, the commission with you. The commissions there range you know, everywhere, I mean, I've seen commissions on things, information products like courses, as high as 50%. 50% of the price goes to the the salesman, the salesperson. So that's pretty cool. Um, so look into, you know, there's a lot out there about affiliate sales, affiliate marketing. And uh, it's a great approach. Again, it sort of depends on having an audience that's big enough with people who are actually going to buy that product. Um but if there's something that's right down the middle, right down the pipe for your audience and your subject matter, it makes a lot of sense to get into there and just, you know, again, you have to disclose that one of the things I talked about in the monetization module uh, of the lessons that I just talked about is you do have to give disclosure, conspicuous adjacent disclosure of the fact that there's a financial relationship when you're mentioning a product or service. And that's only fair, right? You don't want to buy a product and then later find out that the you heard about it on a podcast and, you know, they got paid for, for promoting it to you. Um, it, you want to know that before you make a purchasing decision. It's just a sort of common sense consumer safety kind of a thing. So um, let me see. Who else is – okay. Who else is here? Anybody else want to say anything? I've got Rob. I've got Sarah. Nice engagement. Thank you for that, by the way. But I see other people, well, only a couple of people watching. So, okay. It's, I've been going for 42 minutes already. My goodness. 
I must really like the sound of my own voice. <laughs> Listen, thank you all for being here and thank you for your attention today. Come on over to, one more time, I'm gonna give that, uh, that call to action to uh, the access, uh, access.legitpodcastpro gets you the, uh, the viewing portal for all of the videos that I did this week. So access.legitpodcast.com pro.com. That's the all access page. And uh, let's get that up on the screen for you here. One more time. It's in the show notes in the links, I should say below the video. I say show notes, but it's a live stream. I don't know. Anyway, I hope you like what I've uh, what I've got to offer there and that you'll take a look at easy legal for podcasters doors for that open on Monday. I'll be making a big announcement. You'll see it here in, in the podcast lawyer page. You'll see it on the legit podcast pro page. I'll, I'm not going to be shy about promoting it. So um, I hope it's uh, of value to you. And I hope you're ready to start taking things seriously and being professional so you can maximize your impact, maximize your influence, and make a difference. Change the world using your podcasting, right? All right. That's it for today. Have a great one. I will see you again very, very soon. And until next time, keep on podcasting and have a great one.